RFID cards. They're everywhere these days. But can you hack them? <laughs> Hello and welcome back to The Man Cave. Today we're going to cover a little bit about radio frequency ID or RFID. It's been a bit of a, a hobby of mine for about the last year, year and a bit more. Now RFID tags are absolutely everywhere. They can be in everything from your access badge that you might need to use for work, through to common toys, through to hotel access cards, um, and, and they come in many, many, many different geysers. Even your credit card has an RFID chip in it. Your car keys potentially have an RFID chip in there. Heck, if you do park runs, you're probably wondering what the shoe was doing sitting there. If you do park runs, you'll notice this little tag that they give you as you run across the line to start and to finish. This little tag identifies you as having crossed or having started. So they don't need to actually track where you are. It's a really good idea. But have you ever stopped to think about the security considerations? So in this video, I'm gonna do a little bit of an introduction to radio frequency ID and the kind of things you can do with it at the moment. I don't profess to be an absolute world leading expert in RFID. I've been learning just like some of you have been learning, but I'm gonna share what I know and see where we go. If you notice any mistakes or you have any comments, please put them below and I'll react and respond accordingly. So RFID is literally everywhere. You get everything from the sort of the low frequency kind of cards and tags through to high frequency cards that are often used on hotels, got lots and lots and lots of those, often hotel door locks use those. Even you get travel cards that use RFID, and then you get plastic travel cards that use a slightly different kind of RFID chip. Yep, that's an Amsterdam travel card, that's a UK travel card, but and they both have the same thing. I just couldn't find a set of UK ones or a set of um, Dutch ones, but they both do similar things. Um, you even get little game cards as well. Now this actually has an RFID chip in in this particular plastic, in this uh, in this card, you <clears throat> even get a little game, little toys. This is a little figure. It should have another figure on top. And if you were to place that down on a Nintendo console, um, yep, the RFID chip in the base would become active, just like this little thing here. And suddenly, the game would give you whatever that would be. That'd be Baby Mario would appear in the game to do something for you. You also see RFID chips in these kind of formats as well. These are wristbands, so that you can wear one of these. It's waterproof, it's shockproof, um, and it allows you then to very easily open your hotel door without having to mess around and without having to have pockets. So what can you do with RFID cards and, and how can you read them? Well, you don't need to invest in expensive equipment like these. This is a Proxmark V3 and this is a Proxmark V4. These are relatively expensive pieces of equipment at I think around 300-ish euros and now currently around 400 euros for this particular device. You can use a basic bog standard RFID dongle and the bog standard Linux tools and that will allow you to read the RFID cards and write to some of them and perform some of the kinds of attacks. Recently as well at 44Con, Chrissy Morgan, a swordfish on uh, Twitter, um, actually ran a complete demonstration about how to turn components just like this, which cost I believe around 15 pounds, into an RFID reader writer. What are some of the risks with radio frequency ID cards? Well, one of the huge risks is that they kind of all look like each other. Now these are all the same card, but these plain white cards belie a bit of a difference in truth, in that this is a low frequency card, that is a Paxton tag, that's a high frequency tag, and they all look physically different. But take, for example, um, this card and this card and one of these cards and one of these cards. These all look absolutely identical. And I mean, like this one here, it looks absolutely identical but they're not, they're totally different inside. They're using different generations of technology and they're using totally different ways of doing things. And the security considerations are totally different. 
Now, just because a card has much lower levels of security does not mean to say that it is unusable. Take, for example, these travel cards. These transport cards are using MyFair Ultralight and they are relatively easy to copy should you wish to. However, let's think about what you could do if you can copy them. You can copy this card, sure, but this card is worth seven euros 50 and is good for one hour, or one day in fact. This one's good for one day. You get three euros 50 ones which are good for one hour. Which means that once it's started to be used, it's then no longer able to be used. Now, if you were to copy it, what can you do? Well, once you've started to use either it or the copy, whichever one you haven't used is now invalid. So in actual fact, although these don't have the same level of security as say some of the other more advanced cards, it doesn't really matter. And so the train companies have really done their homework. They've done a relatively cheap card, which has lower levels of security, but quite frankly, in this case, it doesn't matter. That brings me on to hotel cards. And there's lots and lots and lots of hotel cards, which I'm attempting to show without actually showing you the name of the hotels, just in case I need to go and stay in them again. Um, and these cards are relatively easy to copy as well. Some of them are MyFair Classics, some of them are MyFair Ultralights. And really to copy one of these cards, I would just need, if I was using my Proxmark V4, to get my Proxmark to within about that sort of distance with this antenna on for about 90 seconds. And I've now, broken the encryption and I've copied your card, which would mean if I knew which was your room, I'd be able to enter your room. Now you've got to think, why is it that a hotel would deploy cards that you could relatively easily copy? Well, one of the main reasons why they deploy them is because in actual fact, their risk is not someone breaking into your room. Their risk is that you lose these cards or lose the actual physical keys. Because if you lose a physical key, they've got to then go and change the door lock because they don't know. Whereas if you lose one of these or someone walks away with one of these when they leave, these are lovely souvenirs, very, very pretty cards. Um, what happens is they just simply invalidate the card. In fact, they would invalidate the card when any guest checks out anyway and put new crypto keys on, or you hope they put new crypto keys on. So new cards, the new keys will, will work in the door. But really it just goes down to say that the hotel is protecting their asset, not protecting your asset. And that's why it's really important to understand what the kind of technology are and what they're used for. Remembering that in actual fact, they're protecting themselves, not you. Well, that's about the end of where I can get to on this really, really quick whistle stop tour of what RFID is and the different kinds of cards that you may actually encounter. The more that you look around, the more you'll start to spot more and more cards that are more and more use cases that currently exist. In this series on RFID, I'm going to cover how to use the Proxmark technology as well as more cheaper technology to copy low frequency cards, how to copy MyFair Classic cards, how to copy MyFair Ultralight cards, how to copy N tags. I'll kind of run through all of them. Anyway, that's it from, from the man cave. It's getting quite dark here, getting quite late here. So I'm going to sign off and say, please like and subscribe. And if you've got any comments, if there's anything you'd like me to cover, please put them in the comments below. Whoa! <laughs>